for some women, I think it's the fear of, okay, what if, what if I actually feel super powerful and I like it? Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today's episode is a fun and even spicy one. We're talking about sensual dance and movement, how to deeply connect with our bodies, our intuition, the power of our divine feminine, and release the fears and self-judgment that holds us back. Our guest today is Andrea Maximo. Andrea is a life and sensual embodiment coach whose mission is to help women step into their full selves by connecting to their sensuality through dance. Aside from her coaching, she has an online community of over 200K on TikTok, a podcast, and runs a Groove Ride fitness studio with her husband. From individual to group work, Andrea believes that music and movement have the power to help you discover yourself and feel free no matter what stage in life you're at. Hello, Andrea. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. I'm so excited to have you. How are you? Hey, Eileen. I am so, so great. I'm excited for this little bit of a break to chat with you in between my kind of crazy day. I had my mom yeah. hat on before. I took it off. Now I get to be a coach again. So I'm, in, I'm looking you, forward to this. You have a lot. You wear a lot of hats. Like you have I life do. coach, you run a fitness studio, you have kids. So, you, so you, I'm sure your plate is very full. So I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so tell us more about your story. Like, how did you get into sensual dance and life coaching? Yeah, absolutely. So that started, I see, I got into sensual dance about 16 years ago. I used to live in Los Angeles. Um, I was an actor, had like a super common story. You know, you're an actor and you've got the trainer and you bartend at night or you work in a restaurant. Oh. And um, my trainer was like, hey, I went to this pole dancing class and it was really fun. So I'm like, well, you know, I like strip clubs and I've never done pole dancing and, you know, we're newlyweds. This could be kind of fun to spice up the relationship, right? Not Mm -hmm. that we needed spicing, but you're thinking like just fun things. So I went and just was the beginning of it all for me. Um, I had never been to a class like this before. I don't know if other classes at the time were like this, but from what I'd heard, it wasn't. It was very unique in the approach. It wasn't about the pole. The pole was a big part of it. It did kind of, um, you know, my first spin was like childlike feeling and I was all excited and I was high afterwards. I was like, oh my God, I want to do that again. (laughs) But the dancing part, right? Watching the teachers demo their dance, I was enthralled because they were like, different sizes and shapes and ages and every single one like owning their body, owning their sensuality, owning their sexual energy, just unbelievable. Um, And I just, I fell in love with it. So I I went to that. I was a student for a little while. I became a teacher for the same studio, Um, rose up in, 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 you know, in that studio and became one of the, you know, the lead teachers for my mentor, uh, Sheila Kelly, who was extraordinary. Um, she runs S Factor Studio. She is a brilliant body whisperer is what we were called. Okay. Um, so that, that is, was the start of it. The life coaching piece came because, you know, for me, what was created there was amazing and it was perfect. And I wanted to kind of add more. I wanted to do my own spin on it. So for me, I felt that there wasn't enough discussion of what we were experiencing and feeling mm-hmm. in the class. Um, so I added the life coaching component. I went and got certified, um, you know, and I worked with more women. Um, I brought in two trauma specialists to take the class uh, with me to take the course to, you know, help me out with anything in there that would possibly be triggering or how to create a really safe environment for anybody who might have um, like essay in their past. But basically it it all started from that one experience um, 16 years ago. And it was, it was life-changing, you know, to say the least, it was life-changing. Yeah. That's beautiful. Even hearing you tell that story, like I can feel it. And and I've seen pole dancing. I I am a dancer, so I used to do hip hop, but like some people, like like I've gotten into freestyle. Like I know what you're talking about, like that feeling of just like being in your body and it's so joyful and so fun. So it just gets me excited when you, when you talk about it, because I can feel your passion. Yeah. 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 Joyful and fun and free. 
are words yes. that I will he- expansive. These are words that students yes. will say after a class, you know, um, mm. freedom, expansive, uh, no apology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, just being your authentic self. Flowing. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, were you a dancer before that or was this your first entry into dance? <laughs> so here's what's funny. I, <laughs> I studied dance in school. Okay. Um, I, I went to about, you know, it was ballet. I didn't have, I didn't have the patience. I did not have at the time, my gremlin told me the coordination. Okay. And I had, you know, a teacher who had, uh, one of those, you know, those core, uh, core memory moments that create the gremlin, which is her telling me, if you would just connect your brain to your feet, you'd be an excellent dancer. Okay. Oh, geez. So yeah. <laughs> and they, they all seem to be that way, no matter what school I went to. So it, it didn't, it didn't um, feed me, but I loved movement. I just didn't know enough about other styles of dance at the time. So I kind of just, everything else was me dabbling in it because of school, because I was an, a theater major, you know, you had to take movement, you had to take dance. It came naturally to me to move, um, you know, to dance music is literally life for me. It's, it's part of my medicine. Um, so there was that, but when I took this class, this was the first time that I, it wasn't like burlesque, you know, it wasn't like, it was really trying to teach you a style of intuitive, sensual movement. So they were going to show you some things, but then eventually it was about you freestyling, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, it wasn't about perfection. It wasn't about lines. It wasn't about your toes. Well, toes mm-hmm. being pointed was a big thing in the pole world. But, um, you know, it wasn't about perfection so much as it was about what you were solely what you were feeling. It wasn't about what you look like. And I never felt that freedom in any other kind of dance discipline. Oh, yeah. 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 And I love that in dance, there's that range. Like there's a super structured and rigid, you know, ballet sure. and those types of dance. And then you have this right? You have the sensual dance that is about freedom and expression. So I I just love that there's a spectrum kind of there that exists. There needs to be a spectrum though. And I think that's important that you point that out though, Eileen, because what didn't move me, those same feelings a ballerina will have because it it was her language. It speaks to her. Do you know what I mean? So for me, it's like, don't give up on one thing. I just didn't know enough about other things. And of course, obviously yeah. at 14, my mom's not going to take me to a pole dancing in class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, let's try strip tees. Um, mm-hmm. you, know, you didn't like that. So, um, you know, I, I, it's, yeah. I, but I think it's important for people to note that this, you know, some, for some people it's yoga. Some people it's, you know, it's a martial art. Some people it's, it's some kind of, it's meditation. And, you know, for me, it was this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, I love that, especially for people out there who feel like they're they're not good at dancing or they're not, you know what I mean? Maybe they didn't connect with a specific kind of dance before. Like movement is a part of all humans, right? Like we there there is a kind of movement out there that you will connect with. Yeah. I so, 100% agree. I think the right? saddest thing in the world is watching a human on the sidelines who wants to dance so badly and they're so afraid. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Before we go on, let's take a break to hear about today's sponsor, Ginger. All for using natural products, especially when it's something I'm putting on my body. Ginger is a high quality, 100% natural essential oil made from ginger root with so many amazing benefits meant to rejuvenate the mind and body. It's free of micro impurities and it comes pre-mixed with carrier oils like jojoba and evening primrose, making it safe to use directly on the skin. I've been using Ginger's rejuvenating self-care kit to pamper myself and ease the tension in my mind and body. The kit includes a bottle of ginger essential oil, a mini portable diffuser, a gua sha massage stone, and a limited edition ginger beauty pouch. My go-to pick-me-up when I've been working too long on the computer is to massage it into my tense shoulders. It has this light ginger scent that's not too strong and creates a warming effect when applied to the body. Right now, the Lavender Lifestyle listeners can get 20% off their first purchase at Ginger. Simply visit ginger.us slash T-L-L. That's J-I-N-J-E-R dot U-S slash T-L-L. Again, that's ginger with two J's dot U-S slash T-L-L. 
I want to get into later, we'll get into like how to get over that fear. Yeah. Um, but, but back to your story, I mean, how, how do you feel like sensual dance changed your life? Like what happened after you kind of tapped into that? So after I tapped into it, I would have to tell you, after I tapped into my sensuality, it was about the presence that I didn't realize I was lacking before. Presence to just the world around me, the beauty in the simplicity of a plant, of a flower. Uh, I mean, like nothing looked the same. Everything seemed heightened. Everything tastes better. Um, your senses, you know, the way we teach is that we're operating from our senses when you move. So I'm asking, I'm cueing you, what are you feeling with your hands? What are you hearing? You know, what is what in the music is moving your hips right now? Is it the drum? Is it so it's all a sensual experience. When you have that become part of your practice, it can't help but leak into other parts of your life. So how is that relevant? Because we're so much on the go. We're constantly moving fast, 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 right? We don't allow ourselves enough time to be present. We don't allow ourselves sometimes enough time to process our feelings, to experience anything. And sensual movement in this particular style that I teach gave access to all of that. It gave permission. Your dance could be mm. spicy. Your dance could end up with you sobbing. Your yeah. dance, you could be raging and throw your fucking shoe across the room. Like it could be anything you needed it to be because it was your expression and all of it was accepted. Yeah, I love that. And I love this, The when you said sensual, typically I think sensual is sexual, but when you said it now, I'm like, oh, it means the senses right? You're more present. You're activating your senses. Like there, There's like multiple meanings there. A hundred percent. Well, you could have a yeah. sensual experience when you're eating dessert, right? You're having a yes, sensual exactly. experience exactly. when you hug your best friend and there's yeah. that release of oxytocin and serotonin. And you're just like, oh, I love you. And you just, you feel this energy exchange. That's a sensual experience. You can have a sexual experience and no sensuality present. Mm, I see. Yeah. Okay. You can have a physical experience with the absence of sensuality completely. And you can have sensual experiences all day long with the absence of any physical sexual experience. Yeah. So why don't you, just for clarity for the listener, define what sexual or sensual dancing is for you? Yeah. So for me, in the style that I teach, sensual dance is a style of movement that is slow. It is intentional. Okay. It is, um, I don't want to say tactile because that sounds like such a, like a weird clinical word, but we use our hands a lot because you're putting them on your, on your body. Um, it is not beat driven. It is not um, about musicality. It is not about choreography. I do teach a basis of what I call language. So maybe certain movements to help people find their way into it. But eventually it's about you learning it, music goes, and you find this undercurrent of energy in the song, okay? You find the feeling of whatever the singer was trying to give you, or whatever it's bringing you and what it's bringing up for you, and you close your eyes. Eileen, and I want you to imagine that you're just waiting and feeling, and let's say you start to sway, mm -hmm. and then you're going to feel that sway in your shoulders, and then if you start leaning a little bit too far to the right, you tip and you let your body go. You don't stop it because your brain's not involved. It's your body now. Mm. So you were learning to follow your body's impulses. Wow. Um, I always tell my students, there's no mistake in this style of dance. It's not about precision. It's not about choreography. If I told you, hey, in this phrase, we're going to go left with our hands and you went right, I'm going to always tell you that's because your body wanted to go that way. You'll find your way back around. Don't worry about it. You know. So it, to me, this style of sensual movement means slow, intentional. It's about touching. It can be sexual. Again, it's all about the intention yeah. of the dancer and what yeah. she or they want to release. Yeah. And I love that. So I can tell it's all about like feeling what your body wants to do, not what your mind is thinking what you should do. Right. It's, and that is something that a lot of us have lost. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when people are funny. dancing, they're worried about, oh my god, do I look good? Should I be doing this? Is this the right angle? You know, there's so many thoughts that go through our mind. 
So always you're judging. You are the worst judge, the worst judge, you know, and in the beginning I didn't have mirrors because the studio I came from had that philosophy, no mirrors in the studio. So these women weren't going to judge themselves. But, you know, as I evolved my, my practice and evolved my, my curriculum, um, I was challenged by somebody to be like, well, are we helping people though run from their image? If we're never going to ever introduce them to the mirrors, if we're never going to get them comfortable with seeing themselves move in front of the mirror, you know, and then here comes mirror work very popularly coming around now, you know? So it was, it was interesting because I, I do now only teach with the mirrors in the room or if, you know, depending on where I'm, I'm traveling to, but I do allow people to play in those mirrors now and encourage mm-hmm. it. I mean, are there, do you encourage them to close their eyes at first or are they watching themselves? I do encourage them to close their eyes and, and not watch, right? So we actually sit in a circle to, when we're live. You know, when we're online, we obviously have to do whatever it is. But I, I encourage them not to look at themselves, especially in the beginning, um, because they are going to sit there and they're going to criticize. And you're going to be like, oh, it doesn't look like Anjua. And, you know, my toes aren't doing what her toes do. Oh, that girl over there is moving so pretty. I like the way exactly. she's moving. We yeah. start getting into comparison, right? Yeah. Um, and the truth is, is that I could teach you, Eileen, the same four words. And yes, I may tell you your rules are, if you can call them rules, your guidelines are to go slow, breathe, and allow your body to lead and not your mind. And that's all I'm going to tell you. And don't use the beat, okay? You're going to move different than Jane, than, you know, Juanita, than, you know, whatever. Everybody's going to interpret it differently. And that's the beauty of it. Because if you yeah. had a bad day, I'm going to see that in your dance. Oh, you know? Yeah, yeah. If Jane had, you know, got a promotion at work, I may see a little bit of more sway in her hips. There's a little more shimmy in her shoulders. She's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah she's happy. Yes. Yeah. I'll see it in her body. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, let's talk about um, how to get started then. I guess what are your tips for people who want to try this? Like, do you just recommend putting on music at home? Like, what, how do we start? And then next, how do we get over those like fears and self judgment? These are such good questions because I, I can't tell you, I, I read comments all day long on my feed about, I want to, and I'm afraid. I want to, and I'm afraid. Oh my gosh, I can see myself doing it and it terrifies me. Um, so let's say this first, you don't have to come to a class to do this. Okay. And if having a guide in the beginning is helpful, there's a lot of us that are out here doing central embodiment, central movement, different ways, different styles, try everybody out. But if you just want to start it's really as simple as something like, I want, I want you to think about you getting ready for shower in the morning. And I want you to think about how you may go through it a little mindlessly. Um, you know, you may just jump in, you're not thinking about it, you're shampooing, you're scrubbing, and you're getting in and you're getting out. Well, my challenge would be then, can we extend it a little bit longer? Can we be more present to how our clothes feel when they come off our body so we're not rushing? Can we be more present to how it feels when the water hits your skin? taking a second, close your eyes and really taking in how it feels as it comes down your skin. Like again, tuning into your senses, your breath, you know, and blessing your body, whether it's in the bath or in the shower. I, I literally thank my feet and I'll say, you can say whatever you want. And that's the other thing. People are like, well, I don't know what to say. Say whatever you want. I thank my feet for keeping me grounded every day. I think my legs are keeping me moving forward. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's about reverence and time and people, but does it really work? Well, if what you're doing right now isn't working, why not try something else? If repetition we know will help somebody else learn something, why would it not help you learn something? Right. If you yeah. water a plant every day, it's going to grow. Well, maybe not every day because I kill my plants. But, <laughs> um, you know, if, if you understand what I'm saying, like it's about feeding something. And, and, and if you are going to feed your child, if you're going to love on your child, you have to do all those things in order for the child to grow. It's no different than you dealing with yourself. Right. We're usually so f- occupied on like taking care of everything outside of ourselves that we forget to take the time. And then that, that like blessing your own body, right? That's five minutes. I'm asking you for, <laughs> if you right. can't commit to longer, fine. Don't feel bad mm-hmm. about it, but then give yourself something. So it starts as simple as that, Eileen. I think it starts as, 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 as simple as you, um, 
sitting quietly with yourself. It doesn't mean you have to be meditation. It could be your favorite songs that move you, but it's allowing yourself to listen internally to your body, to listen to, you know, feelings, ask yourself questions and seeing what the answers feel like in your body. Okay. And to me, that's how you start to really distinguish, um, what the fear is about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think it's important for people to ask themselves what they are afraid of, to actually have that conversation with themselves. What scares me about expressing myself in this way? What scares me, you know, about, um, people seeing me possibly express myself in this way? What, what is uncomfortable about it? What button is it pushing? What trigger is it setting off? I mean, this could be tied to your religious background. It could be tied to, you know, your family values. It could be tied to your culture. It could be tied to the city you're from and what the vibe is there. It's so many things that I'm dealing with when I'm working with students that are interfering with me talking to you. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm trying to find you, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. asking yourself that. And then I would say the last thing, if you want to start the dancing piece is you let it be silly. I want you to expect yourself to feel foolish. I want you to expect yourself to feel silly and know that you're not the only one. And if you start to actually feel, I don't know, sexy or sensual or spicy or whatever, let it happen. Let it happen and, and bring a little smile to your face. And if it starts to feel a little bit scary, note it, journal it. What was it about it that got to feel a little bit as I got freer, got scarier? You know, it's you becoming um, like there's a quote out there, but it's basically you becoming your own best muse. You know, you are the muse. Right. Right. That's the deal. Yeah, I think, I mean, what would you say are the most common things that people have to get over, like common types of fears? And how, how do you help people break through them? Is it, a, is it like a self-reflective practice only where you encourage them to journal or? It's a combination. You know, I think getting people to get past those fears first has to come with their willingness to dig a little bit. Okay. You don't have to have the exact answer. You don't maybe have to pinpoint exactly where it started. But it's the willingness to understand, I don't want to feel this anymore. And now I'm willing to go forward and do something about it. Um, I think it's a combination of baby steps in your movement and, you know, experimenting and seeing how things feel. Because that's all it is, it's exploration. I always say when you're touching your body with your hands as we're dancing or even just in life, it's asking permission first inviting your hands to your body and then noting where your hands feel good and where your body doesn't like them. And you're learning how to now practice consent with yourself. Okay. Wow. So little yeah. things like that. Um, I think just helping people who maybe have, um, they could have essay in their background, you know, they could have, um, you just other th insecurities with their body. Um, I have people who, you know, have gone through everything, through eating disorders, who have, you know, just grown up with the basic stresses of trying to be a woman in a media yeah. <laughs> world that right. tells you, you got to look this way, you know, just regular stuff like that. There's a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. And then, you know, I get women that are older, um, maybe who have been through divorce, um, who are, you know, lost a sense of who they were. I have moms you know, in there who are afraid to kind of, and the fear I think is, it's different for everybody, but for some women, I think it's the fear of, okay, what if, what if I actually feel super powerful and I like it? That's a fear. You know, what do I do with all this power now? Um, mm -hmm. When I've been always told it's bad or it's scandalous or it's this, that, and the other, you know, what if it's unleashed? Then I think there's the fear um, for some women that it's, you know, that they are going to be ridiculed. They're going to be mocked. They're going to be rejected. And again, I'm like, who? By whom? Not us. Not this circle. So it's in here. Right? Yeah, it's in here. Um, and you know what? It's a lot of why I encourage women not to dance right away for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Keep yeah. the dance for yourself. That, there's the that judgment there. Right away. <laughs> when you're you already judging off. yourself. Yeah. yeah, you're already judging yourself. And now yeah. you're going to rush off and show your partner what you learned, right? <laughs> your spouse, whomever. And, and then if they, here's the thing, you got to understand, what are you looking for validation? Because the truth of the matter is, is if they are 
you know, in a situation uh, that they're not prepared to handle the energy that you have brought forth, they may give you a reaction you don't want. You're not ready to handle. Learn it for you first. Get really mm-hmm. fierce and comfortable with this energy for you. So that no matter what comes at you, you know, if they got up and made a sandwich, you're going to keep dancing. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying like myself should, and it, it feels easy. good. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the the power that this brings. And th- th- you can use the words like divine feminine or your intuition. I mean, talk about that. And what ha- what do you see? What do you feel? What are we gaining, I guess, from from tapping into this power? So first thing I want to say is divine feminine, everyone has, right? It's not just women. It's not our special superpower. Um, We have divine masculine energy within us as well. One of the best ways I've heard it described is divine feminine is our inner energy. Okay. It's our inner knowing. It's our intuitive, you know, energy. It's our flow. Um, it's, It's being in tune with nature, in tune with your nature, your rhythm, your cycles. Okay. And you kind of leading from that space. Um, it can have a darker side to it, of course. You know, that's the other thing. It's not all softness on the divine feminine. So the divine feminine also, you know, she could have the darker feminine aspect of her, um, where she is, you know, raging to heal, raging to, you know, to remove obstacles. That's also healthy. So we encourage that. Um, so when we are tapping into that divine feminine, the outer energy is a divine masculine. And that's where I think a lot of us get stuck, which is the go, 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 hustle, 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 accomplish, do more. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're constantly on the go and thinking, um, trying to one up the next thing, trying to go on to the next thing. That energy is needed, but it needs to be balanced And our kind of society for the most part in most of us who are living here, you know, in the States, it's going to feel like we are, in that energy of go, 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 the hustle. So for us to tap into this divine feminine, men included, but I only teach women, but everyone to tap into the divine feminine means that it's allowing us to slow down. It's allowing us to listen more internally to what needs to be done instead of always going off of the head, like moving from both the heart and the head and not just the head always. Um, it allows us, uh, I think for women in particular, following our intuition, which is something that we do not get encouraged to do often. It's something that we're in conflict with often. So that's the other thing. The more present you are to your body sensually, the more you're going to get to know the body signals. The body doesn't lie. I say this all the time. Your body is not going to lie. Your mind will F with you all day long. (laughs) Okay, It will mess with you all day long, but your body will tell you, I don't like that person. Yeah, yeah. Your body will tell you, I don't feel about good about that choice. Your body will tell you, hell yes, this is the one for me. I can't wait to get into this job. This is what I wanted. But we will then, your brain comes in and is like, yeah, but uh, are you ready for that job? Because, you know, what happened last time? And then all of a sudden you're in conflict with your inner knowing and you're gremlin and you're, you're, you're critic. And you know what I'm saying? So to me, getting more in tune with your divine feminine is getting more in tune with your intuition. And that is incredibly important for all of us. It's trusting it over the demons in our head. It's knowing which voice is talking. Is that the expansive voice? That's your inner, your inner voice, your inner knowing, or is it that tight constricting voice of the gremlin? What I call the gremlin. When you talk about that, it it reminds me of, I think I saw this on TikTok where this girl was talking about the book, The Power of Fear, if that's what it's called, where it's basically saying, all these stories of like when women feel fear, like, but, but they doubt themselves like, oh, this person felt like kind of weird to me, but like they overrode it with their mind. And then something bad happened. Like your body is so intelligent. It's telling you like when something feels right or wrong. And so we, but we don't, we don't know how to listen to it. We always like override that. Um, but, but it's there for a reason. So, so trusting our bodies and our intuition is so powerful. Yeah. Well, it's, it's reconnecting that part that probably got disconnected. You had it, you had it, you know, and then everybody talked you out of it or you talked yourself out of it and things happened. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to note too, that in your, again, the womb energy thing, you don't have to have a womb 
You don't have to have a womb. It's an energy. But in that is our erotic energy. And our erotic energy is not something separate outside of us. It is not something demonized. It's, it's what we all came from. I mean, how could it be, right? right? Yeah. Erotic energy is a beautiful thing because it's literally the birth of life. But from your womb energy also comes the birth of ideas, creativity. So you reconnecting with that, your divine feminine energy, your your womb space energy is going to spark those things as well. You know, oftentimes I have people in my life coaching and they'll be like, I'm stuck creatively. I'm like, come move with me. Mm, love that. Come move with me. Yeah. It's all yeah. connected. Yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. That, that's a good tip for me. Cause as a creative, I often get like, I I'll, sometimes I'll have no inspiration, but it's a reminder. Like it's, it, it's rooted in your womb area. Like all you need to do is move, dance, like, right. Is that what you recommend? Like, yeah, well, that's why moving the hips is so important. I, I meant yeah. to mention that earlier when you said, how should we start? Start with moving mm-hmm. your hips. Yes. Okay? Start with yes. moving your hips. They can be, we do very slow hip circles. I think fast is also easier. Mm-hmm. It's what we used to, you know, the club, you're in the club, the music starts, you just start shaking your booty really fast. So it's like, okay, yes, but now slowed it down and see what it really feels like to take up that much space what it feels like to really push the energy of your hips out and around the room, right? And intentionally know that you're doing that. That's a different kind of feeling. So, and if you can't stand, do them seated. You could do them, you could be doing them right now as you're podcasting. (laughs) (laughs) Just tiny little circles in your chair, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) <laughs> viewers are now from now on we like there was something going on Eileen was like sitting on her chair I'm not sure that's funny um and and you said both men and women have the divine feminine and for a woman it's in the womb area is it the same for a man like yeah, just I'm same. just curious so it's it's mm-hmm. all in like the pelvic root is it the root chakra or is it the second one it's the, the sacral, one, right? Yeah. Sacral. Your sacral oh, chakra. Yeah. yeah. Your sacral chakra, which the men have. Everybody has the chakra system from, you know, obviously from yoga, from Sanskrit. That is all going to be within every single human the same. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be different, right? So yeah. Yeah, I, that's why I know there's a, there's a lot of push around the divine feminine seeming to be for women, you know, or I, women identifying it's for everyone. It's just that I think there's just happens to be more practitioners that are looking to help women with it. Okay. Men though, what there are a lot of, there are a lot of, um, instructors and coaches that are doing divine masculine healing, Mm. um, which is really beautiful trying to balance that out. But within Mm. that too, they have to talk about the divine feminine within the men too. So there, Mm. there's help out there. There's, there's definitely people out there who are instructing men. Yeah. Awesome. So what about in your life? What is your routine? Like how often are you dancing? What I want to know what your self-care routine and lifestyle looks like. Yeah, for sure. So the first thing is I finally learned to reject routines for myself. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it does not help me at all. Routines for myself are, um, they, they set me up for failure. (laughs) <laughs> my mind, I accept feel you on that. Yeah. 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 I just, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I think we have to understand that some people are really great at routines and it, it, they thrive and other people, they don't. But the, the thing is, is that we've built everything to seem as if the only way to success is through routine or through doing something in a very rigid kind of manner. And yes, there needs to be practice in order for something to be achieved. But I think that there can be a bit more expansion or space around how we do that, right? So for me personally, it's a daily thing, a check-in. What do you need today? Is it, Mm. you know, do you need a a little bit of a goddess bath? Are we doing a blessing? Are we going to add some oils in today? Do we need to do a meditation? Um, Do we need to dance today? Um, Is it a thing where we just need to be outside and you need to go and go for a walk or work outside instead of being in the house? Um, you know, it's things like that, that keep me constantly connected and checking in with my body, checking in with what I need when I'm overwhelmed, stepping away, not pushing through, you know, if I can help it, sometimes you have to, cause you got a deadline. I get it. Right. Your producer's like, Eileen, let's go. And you got to do what you got to do. But when you can, as soon as you can, it's taken care of you after you did that big push through not just, mm. you know, pushing through to the next thing. Yeah. Um, so for me, that that's really what it is. But some of the things that I love to do, I do have a little space either in my living room or in my basement where I do dance. 
Um, I'm generally most excited to dance after I've taught because of the energy of the women and the exchange of the energy that I'm feeling from them. Um, it's a big part of it for me and in my goddess energy is to feel that connection with other women. So I will dance on my own, but it's, it's really a great thing when I'm dancing after I teach. Um, but yeah, those are the self care style of routine things that I do. It's more about what I need on a day-to-day basis, as opposed to every morning at six, I wake up and I pray. Doesn't work for me. Uh, yeah, no, I love that you explained that because it, it fits with your style. Like, it seems like you have this way of looking at life that it all aligns like sensual dance is about tuning into your body being present what's next there's no rules and that's how you live your life and like it just makes so much sense right it, they're, they're and, all and made up <laughs> yeah yeah right so make up your yeah. own it's true yeah i love, it. I, I I love, love it. that you're just flowing through life asking what you need each day not feeling like you have to stick to anything. Cause I think a lot of people get stuck in that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it is one of those things where, and we get stuck in it though, but because, you know, our parents are stuck in it and their parents were stuck in it. So it's just repeated over and over again. And, you know, uh, I did a TikTok video where I, I basically was just going off about the fact that every, all those rules, those timeline rules are made up that you should graduate by this point and you should have gone to grad school. If you're going to go to grad school by this point and you have to be married by this when the kids, but I'm like, who says, yeah, but who says it's bananas. I don't call it a midlife crisis. It's a midlife awakening. You were awakening to the fact that right now you are ready to do the things you were too afraid and possibly not ready to do back then. Great. Go do them. Now maybe you have the time and the confidence at 50 to do those things. Go do them. And at 24, you shouldn't have to figure out what the hell you want to do. I'm yeah. sorry. You shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't. I'm like, no, go be in your 20s and try and live a little bit and figure it out. And yes, get a job. Yes, take care of yourself. But it doesn't have to be the job. Yeah, that's, that's just my personal feeling. I know that makes some people itch and they stress. And, you know, but, um, you know, I, I just feel like it's done more damage to so many people, so many of my clients who come to me and think that they're failing at 30 because they haven't accomplished something. And I'm like, what the hell are we doing? Yeah. I mean, that's just the way society is set up. And if you're, you have parents that like ingrain this in you, for sure. I, yeah, it was a difficult journey for me too, in my twenties, trying to figure out what I was supposed to do with my life. Um, what is your advice for people who are like, so, um, I guess they, like they want their lives to be a certain way. They're kind of controlling. How do they deal with it? What's your best advice? Oh, you know, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, I, I understand the, the need to want to control every aspect, right? I actually had this conversation with, with somebody who came to one of my free classes and they said, but how do you control the fact that you want to feel this sensuality? You want to express it so boldly, but you know, or you're worried about what people are going to think and how they're going to perceive it and how they'll change their minds about you. And all I said was people are going to do that anyway. They're doing that about you right now and you haven't done anything yet. You know, so I, I continuously will ask, who told you that? And if you can't tell me, then most likely you're the obstacle. And if you're the one who's like, well, I'm telling myself that I don't believe it yet. Okay, then why? Where did you learn that from? What have you seen that has informed you into thinking that you don't deserve to feel this way or that you can't or that it's not possible or you have no right to, right? So I think it's, it's really important for, for people to just take the time and the willingness to ask themselves questions, to examine it gently. I'm not talking about sitting down and interrogating ourselves, <laughs> right? We're not doing like a, you know, an episode of like CSI or something like that. We're not trying to like scare ourselves. It's a, it's, it's a gentle inquiry. And again, I go back to it. I want you to practice, please. I invite you. I don't want you. I invite you to practice talking to yourself the same way you would talk to the very favorite person that you have that you love. And if you're not willing to tell me that you would truthfully sit there to your child or your very best friend and be like, what the hell is wrong with you? You stupid ass. I can't believe you haven't figured it. Like, if you wouldn't do that, 
So why are we doing that? Okay. So it's, it's really that that's it for me is that when you get into that place is you have to give yourself permission to ask yourself some gentle questions and be okay with what those answers are going to be. And then decide what you want to do about the information you find out. Yeah. Yeah. The first step is awareness of like, what is the fear or where does it come from? Why do I believe this? It, it's it not, out. it doesn't happen. The change doesn't happen overnight, oh God, but no. it's, it's a process. It's a journey. And, and it's everybody has something. Yeah. Everybody has something holding them back. Like we, we all, you know, it's except that you're not the only one going through this and it's a journey is yeah, all I can say. And I even tell people yeah. like, there's no, there's no end point to this. Right. So right. Like, oh, Anjua has finished her journey. That's why she's doing what she's doing. Hell no. <laughs> I'm just at a different point in my journey. Mm -hmm. Right. But we're always constantly evolving and learning. So I think it's really important for for people to to give again themselves that space and grace, give themselves grace to understand that there is no timeline, that there is no the right way to do it. Um, You know, that that healing to me is not getting to some place of perfection healing to me for me what it has been and for my clients is understanding these parts of ourselves and either you know some of them we can learn to work out and some of them we have to learn to practice to live with Mm. and manage Right, right. Okay, and not demonize about ourselves. Right, and not make them feel, make us feel bad about ourselves because they're still there, right? No, because some things are just what you do, (laughs) right? Yeah, I mean, how do you define what, what parts are part of you and what parts are not part of you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because some people could be like, oh, that's just who I am. That's my personality, that blah, 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 blah. Right. But, but sometimes that's a lie. Sometimes that's, you know, it it was a judgment that came from someone outside of them. So how, how do you, how do you know what to live with and what to try to work on letting go? To me, I'd go back to the body. What does it feel like in your body when you're in that state? Because if you're going to tell me, I feel joyous when I'm being snarky (laughs) 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 and short with people, um, and they genuinely mean that. You know, who am I to argue with? That's okay, fine. And giving quick, sarcastic responses is part of their personality. It brings them joy to kind of have quick comebacks with people. Okay, fine. (laughs) But then I get to decide if I want to be that person's friend or not. And then they get to decide whether or not their snarkiness is worth holding on to if people aren't going to deal with them. Okay, so I would say you got to look at the thing you want to hold on to. And be like, well, how does it make me feel physically in my body? And is this something that is going to, how does it actually grow me? You know, how am I going to gain or grow from this? And if you can't answer those things and you're not willing to let it go, then it is what it is. You know, you can't sit there and go, well, I'm going to hold on to the fact that I enjoy being consistently late (laughs) to everything and then be mad when people stop inviting you places. Some people maybe get, they'll just love you for you and you'll be like, I'll show up when you show up, but don't be mad about the person who's like, no, I said two o'clock and I meant it. So you have to choose. You have to choose, I think, based on, you know, if it really brings you joy, fine. But if it's something that you're like, no, it actually doesn't. I actually feel really constricted and tight inside when I'm in that space. Okay, well then ask yourself, is it worth holding on to? How is it really growing you? Does it bring you more joy in your life? No? Then why are you doing it? Mm. Yeah. Does why are you holding sense? on to something if it's not helping you? Yeah. There's totally. certain behaviors where I have to ask yeah. my friend, like, well, why? Well, what if it? Well, <laughs> no, I totally doing? understand. <laughs> it's when you put it that way, it, it makes so much sense. But so I think people don't think about it that way. They, it, they use it as like an excuse, right? Like, oh, it's just who I am. I have to, I, I don't know, but, but it makes sense. It's, fine. If it's not helping you grow. If it's not bringing you joy, if it doesn't feel good, why, why hold on to it? If procrastinating all the time is something that you feel in no way hinders you and you are able to live your life and it's not affecting everybody around you through your procrastination, you know what I'm saying? It's not just you. Mm -hmm. And you can somehow say that, then I'm like, well, go on, procrastinate all day long. (laughs) Do your thing. I'm not hiring you for anything, but go ahead and do your thing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You have to be aware of how that will you know, how other people receive that and how they'll respond to it. And then decide, is it worth holding on to or not? Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Amazing. Okay. So let's, I want to talk about your podcast a little bit, the Electric Feminine podcast, because that, that is kind of recent. What has been your favorite episode so far or favorite, I guess, favorite topic or favorite lesson and why? We're five seasons in I and I love them all. It's so funny because if anybody has been following along, they'll tell you I start every episode with, I'm so excited because <laughs> I am. And I mean, I choose people that I genuinely follow. I, I'm fascinated by them. Oh my gosh. Let me see. I, I'd have to say one of my favorite episodes um, was with this woman named Aja Fire. Okay. Aja Fire is actually in this season that's uh, just dropped um, in season five. And she is a healer. Um, her story was uh, she had stage four, I believe it was ovarian cancer. I may need to check that. Um, just very, very dire situation. Um, and I'm just was experiencing a lot of trauma in our general tradition, you know, our medical system here. Um, didn't feel like, you know, she was getting the answers she needed. Didn't feel like she was getting respectfully, you know, um, uh, getting her answers, you know, uh, mm -hmm. answered or her yeah. questions answered. Um, and just didn't like how many times she felt like she was going in surgery, whatever. So she decided to take her, her health in her own hands and went to Peru and went into the jungles and found people to teach her, um, different healing, uh, modalities through plants and was able to bring back these, these medicines and helped herself, um, and ha is, has been helping people, um, you know, ever since. Not only does she help with the plant medicine and plant medicine education, she has a tremendous, um, I don't, I don't know if you, I don't know what you would call it. She has a capacity to hold space for people in grief like I've never seen. So the video that caught my attention was her just sitting um, quietly with uh, a woman. She had her hand on her back and this woman was just sobbing, grief stricken, like wrapped sobs. And in those sobs, it was just like a release and you could see, and, and, you know, Aja was just encouraging her to let go and to let go. So she also helps heal uh, people work through their trauma and their inability to release and to cry. Um, you know, in particular, she helps in the black and Brown community, um, black women uh, who are often feeling like they're not able to be vulnerable, who are working a lot in their divine masculine outer energy because they have to hustle and go and go and go yeah. and take care of things. Um, she's, it's another way to allow them into their divine feminine is giving them space to be soft, giving them space to be vulnerable, giving them space to reconnect with emotion, right? Divine masculine is, is not, not devoid of emotion, but it's not as much working from there. Like I said, it's in your head. And um, she's helping people find their way back into the heart. So that is, she just moved me. She moved me because of her story. And it just blew wow. my mind that she was able, you know, because I was like, who does that? I mean, yeah. I was like, I even asked her in the pot. I'm like, how did you do to Google Jungle of Peru medicinal yeah. course? Like, how, how do you know where to go? Did you, where did you go? <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah, God, that's amazing. She did her own research and she just found her way down there. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, they've, they, it's, I've had everyone from, you know, teachers to coaches to just best friends and, and family members that have amazing stories of resilience, um, have come through circumstances that, you know, again, you're like, how, how do some people rise from these things? And they've just provided such beautiful, candid, truthful conversations that I think people can relate to. Um, you know, the podcast is very open. We're very candid. We speak about spirituality, sexuality, sensuality, um, the different forms of it all. Um, you know, it's not saying any one way is the right way. It's about, you know, giving these women a platform. And, and you know, I, I try to bring on and focus on uh, Black, Brown, Indigenous, Asian um, creators and wellness, uh, you know, advocates and it's, it's really about spreading the word and the knowledge. And I'm not here to convince you or change your mind is what I always say too. It's I'm planting seeds. If you choose to do something with it, great. If not, toss the seed away, but it's there for mm -hmm. you. It's there for you. Yeah. I love that. I, I also love how you focus on these stories of these women. It's, it's just very empowering to hear all of this. 
you talked about how you do talk about sensuality, sexuality, and spirituality. Let's talk about those three things, your definitions of what they are and how they align. Like, what do we need to know about? Because I, I do know they're all connected, but in your words, how? What I feel the difference between sensuality, sexuality, and spirituality are nothing. <laughs> well, well, there, there are, there are, there are differences, but there is a total thread and a connection. Okay, yeah. so sensuality, as I stated earlier, we can experience it with no sexual acts involved at all. Okay, it can be as wholesome as you enjoying the best ice cream in the world, and your eyes are rolling back in your head. That's a sensual experience. It is about tying your everything to your senses, allowing yourself to be present because you can't, if you're not present, you're not present to what's happening right now in the moment, then you're not in your senses. Okay. Um, then you have sexuality. Sexuality is going to be exactly what it sounds like. Any act, thought, thing to do with sex, um, with intimacy, sex, whatever you want to call it. Um, those, you know, you can have sexuality and be devoid of sensuality. You can have sensuality that leads to sexuality, right? So there's threads and there's tiny bridges between them all, but they're not necessarily one and the same. And then you have spirituality. Now, spirituality, I really think, is an individual thing. But for my money, spirituality has become my connection to my inner knowing, which to me is my connection to the divine. In my feeling, in my eyes, if we are all made of divine energy or we are all made in the, you know, the image of the divine, that means we have that within us, then what I'm listening to is really that connection. You know, the expansive voice that's telling me yes or no, that's not safe, don't go there. That to me is me speaking to my higher coach, my divine energy, whatever you want to call it, okay? So how is that connected? Well, in order for me to be there, I need to be present. <laughs> in order for uh, me to be present, I got to connect to my connection. senses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? So now okay. I take a walk outside. I'm not just looking at trees. I'm looking at trees. I'm listening to trees. I'm hearing the divine within the trees, though, because I'm mm. now so present to how it's making me feel inside. The expansiveness. You're seeing the connection to everything around me. Now, how is spirituality connected to sexuality? As I stated earlier, Sexuality does not always have to be a sacred experience, but it can be a sacred experience, okay? It has the potential to be in a sacred experience. And generally that's going to happen when you have two people that are bonding on a deeper level, both emotionally, but also generally sensually as well, right? So there's a sensual connection to be between the two people. There's the the foreplay before we get to the core play, right? So it's like really understanding that there's, there's different ways to even do sexuality, right? right. So I, I would never even dream of saying it's this, this, and this. <laughs> it's this sometimes, and it's that sometimes, and it's this under these circumstances, and it's that under these, right? But you can choose to connect them all. But I think one of the things that we've done as a society that has been so dangerous is we disconnected sexuality from spirituality, right? We disconnected it completely and said the two have nothing to do with it. And I'm like, but how did we all get here? Why are we pretending like these things don't happen? Right. And why are we pretending like it can't still be sacred? Yeah. Cause right? sexuality now has become either taboo or over, you know, over sexualization where there is none of the spirituality, which is why I asked you the question in the first place. I don't think a lot of people put those two together. Like how does sexuality and spirituality work together? And, but, but you're saying like, that's the original form. <laughs> Originally it was the same. That's how we came here. That's how creation happens. Um, but now it's, we've just separated our body from the spirit and it's just, you know, <laughs> that's it. No, I, I mean, you know, and, and even to what you touched on earlier, the one that's, you know, over sexualized, I'm like, what does that even mean though? Because to me, sexualized, over sexualized, it's just erotic, right? We've now found a way to make that too much though. So now it's like, we're going to judge the amount of sexuality. I'm like, well, okay, well, this is just enough. 
That's you know, true. Like what? too much, but Beyonce <laughs> what is, is just the right amount. Do you see what I'm saying? You're right. You're right. That yeah, is, like, that's a lie. Right. <laughs> what is too much? Who's defining this is not okay. This is okay. It's men. It's the patriarchy. It's, I, it's everything. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so even within that, we have to stop and ask ourselves. Now, here's the thing. I think the, the very, you know, erotic side of, of our sexuality, um, that's more of our human nature than our divine possibly, but it's not wrong. It's about balancing it out. Yeah. And even within that, you having multiple sex partners, if you are doing it because you honestly feel empowered and it's not because you're filling a void, then do your thing. Now, if you at some point find that it's no longer serving you and you're looking to connect on a deeper level or that in some way the energy of those people, now, now that's one thing, because there's some people who would look at that and say, no, because I'm not going to share my energy with that many people. And I don't want their energy either, because there's some people who believe that sex is an exchange of energy. And I do believe that in part myself. I really do. I don't believe that you get stuck with someone's stuff necessarily, but I think that their energy can come off on you. You know, so when I, you know, I wish I'd known that when I was in my 20s, because I would have been a lot more selective about who I was exchanging my energy with. <laughs> there are a lot of people who did not deserve my energy. You know what I mean? And there's yeah. a lot of energy I did not want. But, you know, I didn't know those things. I didn't. But now I do. And I, you know, for any women I know that are dating or out there now, I just like do what you want to do, but just really stop and think, is this energy that I want to exchange with this person? Not yeah. are they cute? You know, not even like, do they have a great job? Are they interesting? Yes, there are. All those things are important. And is this energy that I even want in me? Okay, even for one night. And if it's like, well, yeah, because he's just that fine. I'm like, fine. Well, then do your thing, but do a little smoke ritual the next day. And cleanse yourself. <laughs> <laughs> cleanse yourself <laughs> no. cleanse yourself <laughs> do what you got to do but take care of your energy yes That's I'll care clean. after that <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah okay I, I, I think that's so funny uh, but I, I love that topic I feel like we can go deeper into it but since we're kind of getting to the end of our hour um, do you have any final words of advice for the listeners looking to deepen their relationship with themselves, their sensuality, sexuality, spirituality? Yeah. Please stop making yourself wrong for any of it. Your experience is your experience. You didn't do it wrong. You know, it was what happened. Um, so there's so many people that break my heart because they're making themselves so wrong for how things have turned out or how they are doing things now. And I'm literally like, you know what you know. So give yourself some grace, please. And understand that what you have been through, others are going through or have been through and have survived and you can too. And I really think it's like when you're giving yourself space and grace is when you're allowed to then find solutions to these problems and these obstacles. But if you are berating yourself, if you are impatient and angry with your progress, you can't possibly be solution focused, creative, have an open mind if it's under attack. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Where can we find you online? Absolutely. So you can find me on my website. It's uh, anjoamaximo.com, A-N-J-U-A-M-A-X-I-M-O.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram under my name. You can find me on TikTok under my name. Um, those are the two social media spots uh, that I am at the most. All my classes are online, so you can take it from anywhere. I have lots of students that are either in the States or even international all that information is on my website. So yeah, there's, that's the best way. And you can also email me info at onjoamaximo.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Anjua. That was so much fun. And I, I'm so excited for our listeners to listen to this one. And I am just inspired to like do some dancing and, and also journaling on all, all my fears and judgments too. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. I mean, this is great. It was awesome to yes. talk to you. I really appreciate you bringing me on. Thank you so much. Take care.